Welcome back to the FFP. We're gonna get into it today with our week four start sit video. Now we've been breaking these into two parts simply for the fact that these videos get long and, and we wanna kinda of do the first half of the videos including the Thursday game as soon as possible, but we wanna wait a little bit on say the Monday game. You know, quite a few days later than the Thursday game, it gives us some more time to do awesome research. So this is a two part video. We will link in the description to the second part when it's out. There will also be timestamps down in the description below for you to kind of see which games we're talking about today and which players you can hear about. But as always, you know, our goal really for our start sit is to talk about every player from every game. And we want to cover all the information that you are going to need to put out a good lineup and get a win this week. Um, not a whole lot to talk about there. I guess a few more things to consider. One, we have the tool up on our website again this week, which will help you guys if you want to check that out at any point. It just offers um, an algorithm-based fantasy player projected scoring based off of how they've done and the difficulty of their matchup. And it also just rates the difficulty of their matchup. So that's always there in case you forgot something and you wanted to check it, but you didn't really want to watch the whole video a second time. And of course, the biggest thing being drop some comments down below. Let's talk some more football. I have to apologize. I missed a couple comments last week. I thought you were going to get them. You thought I was going to get them. And then Sunday at like three o'clock, I saw that they were missed. And and my apologies for that. So I'm just going to assume that Rob is going to drop the ball again and I'll take care of him. Uh, but again, if you guys have any questions regarding trade, start, sit, waiver, whatever it may be, feel free to use the comment section down below. But uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it with our first game. So I've got game number one Thursday night, Jaguars versus the Bengals. Probably not a very exciting football game, but it has fantasy value. Let's talk about it. Start with the quarterbacks, Trevor Lawrence. Versus Cincinnati, getting up the 12th fewest points to quarterbacks. Now, two of those games were versus the Bears quarterbacks and Big Ben. Uh, not very good quarterbacks, at least not at this point. And Kirk Cousins did light them up. But right now, if you look at Trevor Lawrence, he is not playing well. Five touchdown passes, seven interceptions. Yes, there's been other great quarterbacks that start slow, like Peyton Manning. But he just looks overmatched and overwhelmed, adjusting to the NFL on a bad team. Yeah. Um, he's throwing off his back foot into coverage. You need to sit this guy. In fact, I would go so far to say that he should not even be owned in any formats unless you're in a Two quarterback league, we have to start two quarterbacks, and it's also a dynasty league. And even then, I would say there's probably better options out there right now. Uh, just stay away from this guy. Look at Joe Burrow. Uh, he's been solid. Now, he did have an off game versus the Bears defense, but one, that defense is pretty good. He's versus the Jags, who have made everybody look good, including the Texans' Tyrod Taylor. They're worth a start if you don't have a stud quarterback. I think you could roll with him this week in a good Thursday night matchup. Uh, the only concern I might have for Joe Burrows is the possibility of a blowout in lower volume. With that said, I think the Bengals are going to win this game, but I don't know if they're quite good enough to blow them out. So I think, once again, this is a good play for Joe Burrow in there. I would definitely start him if you need him. As far as running backs go, Joe Mixon. Finally, the guy's on a decent team. They're turning it around. We're beginning to see what Joe Mixon can do on a good team and what he's capable of. He's going to have a very good year. He'll finish top 10 in scoring, I believe. I don't know how you feel about that. No, actually, I completely agree. In fact, we just did the trade targets video. I didn't get to pick any of the players for that video, and I kind of thought that Joe, uh, that Joe Mixon was one of those guys. But Yeah, I agree, too. I think we're finally seeing This guy came out of college. Everybody thought he could be a first-round pick. His stock was lower because of some abuse issues he had uh, in his past, but the guy is actually very talented. Um, he's getting excellent volume. He's number... Two in the league right now in carries. He's their clear number one back. He's solid in the passing game. And they should lean on him all game long in this one. Start him as a strong running back one in this one. And then there's James Robinson. Uh, James Robinson, a guy that you're a little bit confused week one because... Yeah, because he goes out there after a fantastic last year and then they just don't use him. In fact, they give as many or more touches to hide. Yeah, it's really confusing. So Coach Meyer seems to be coming to his senses because each week they're increasing his carries. Um where he's not splitting the role anymore with Hyde. Uh, he's really underrated. 5.2 yards per carry, coming off a very good rookie season. He's used often in the passing game. They need to run the ball often to take that pressure off a young quarterback. Many people have him outside the top 24 at this point, but I believe moving forward that weekly he'll be a top 24 RB2 start weekly. I think they're going to finally use this guy. He's going to be very good. I feel very confident starting him from week to week. In fact, he's a guy, you talk about trade targets, uh, that would be great to go and get at this point. Yeah. Because next week, I think his value is going to go up even more. So you could grab this guy. I'm not sure long-term in Dynasty Leagues because, you know, Travis Etienne, we're not sure where he's going to be at with this. But for this mm -hmm. year, I like the guy. Uh, you look at uh, where he's at right now. Um, they, uh, the Bengals are strong against the run, though. So I do want to caution, even though I think I would start this guy because he's a solid play volume-wise. The Bengals are strong against the run. In fact, they're only allowing 78 rushing yards per game. And that was against some good backs like Devin Cook, David Montgomery, Najee Harris. So I think you got to play jo James Robinson. I don't want to call him Josh for some reason. I just always do. I don't know why that is. 
But uh, James Robinson, I would start him, but lower your expectations. He's a low running back two this week, but I definitely would call him a running back two. I think he'll get about 15 to 18 carries on five to six targets. So that kind of solidifies him volume based, even though his efficiency may not be there. Let's look at wide receivers. What about Chase, the rookie wide receiver for the Bengals? Everybody's worried about him dropping passes in the preseason. Um, and now he's got, what, uh, four touchdowns or three touchdowns, whatever it is, and uh, three games. The guy's been on fire. Um, and he's playing the Jaguars, who've given up four games uh, where they've been up uh, four wide receivers, I should say, 100 yards receiving. So they're getting lit up by these guys quite a bit. Um, one concern I do have for him is he's a very quality wide receiver, very talented, four touchdowns in three games, like you said. But his volume isn't there. He's got three-point catches per game and 5.3 targets per game. So he's a guy that I call like a high-risk, high-reward. And to me, because his volume is not there, this caps him as a guy is what I would call a wide receiver three in larger formats for right now until that volume goes up. Yeah, it's hard to depend on touchdowns. It just is because you're not going to have it. The guy's not going to finish with 16 touchdown passes, right? Yeah, It's exactly. not going to happen. So that's where it is. But he is a stud guy and definitely worth considering. Now let's look at uh, Boyd. Uh, I would sit Boyd if Higgins plays. Uh, if Higgins sits, um, I would start him. But I'd probably do it very low end wide receiver three or flex in 14 team leagues or larger. He hasn't been that good this year. Look like you have something to say about Boyd. Yeah, no, the pause you put in that probably says all of it. Like there's a time to play him, but I just that for me, I just look at that and go, I might check the waiver claim. I feel like there's gotta be something. Or let's be honest, and, and if you're looking at it like Boyd is my best option from week to week, you're probably be, already out of it. So it's probably time for you to make a trade. I agree with you. Uh, but if you're very disparate, you could play him only if Higgins sits. If Higgins starts, sit Boyd. And then you have to bump him down real far. I would say that you know Boyd would be considered a wide receiver three or flex play. And this is in 14-team leagues or larger. And even then, he's not a strong play. As far as Higgins goes, he had touchdowns the first two weeks. He's playing nicely. He's developing into a nice, fancy option. But he's questionable with a shoulder injury. I think you need to monitor him this week and see what he does. If he does play, he's a low-end wide receiver three. Uh, and I do fear re-injury. You never know something like that in a game, especially if they end up blowing out the Jags. This guy's got a shoulder injury. Second half, he doesn't play much. So uh, there's mm -hmm. some question marks there. Let's look at the wide receivers for the Jaguars. You get Chark. Uh, he having just 51 uh, yards per game, 2.3 catches per game. His catch rate is horrible. Now, yes, some of that's Lawrence. Obviously, I'm not putting that on him. I'm putting the quarterback play. But you need to sit until that offense and Trevor gets better. I would just sit him. As far as the wide receivers go for the Jaguars, uh, DJ Chark, you look at there, just 51 yards per game, 2.3 catches per game. His catch rate is horrible. Now, that's not on him. A lot of it's on Trevor Lawrence there. But I would sit until that offense, Trevor, starts playing better. Now, Marvin Jones is the most reliable wide receiver. We've talked about him a few times. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that's leading the team in catches and targets in the game. Like most games, will be playing catch up. And so I think he can be started as a wide receiver three. And then as far as the other wide receiver goes, I always get his name wrong. How do you say his first name? LaVisca Chenault. Chenault. I don't know why LaViscus. I don't know. But anyways, I would sit him also. I would sit all tight ends in this game. As far as kickers go, I would start McPherson, the kicker for Cincinnati. He's actually pretty decent. And sit Lambeau. One, he's on a bad team. And this guy's playing horrible. He's probably going to get replaced very soon. I would sit the Jags defense and start the Bagels in what's a great matchup for them. Normally, the Bagels defense is not a defense. It's got a lot of fantasy value. But this week, they do. So that's my wrap-up of that game. All right, getting into our second matchup, I'm going to break down the Titans at the Jets. Why don't we start off with the, the Titans side? Tannehill coming off a big game last week, but for me, he's a sit. Now, the Jets have given up the fewest, or the, excuse me, the third fewest fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks, and they've only allowed one passing touchdown. But that's kind of a deceiving number. The Jets are just a really bad team as a whole, and they're not putting up points. doesn't mean they're a great passing defense. It means teams are going to run a lot against them and get up early. But that's still going to be true, especially for the Titans, who have been running the ball super effectively over the last couple of games. Um, furthermore, you want to avoid this because why don't I get to the receivers then? A.J. Brown is banged up right now. We don't know a whole lot, but he has a strained hamstring and is expected to be week to week for the next couple of weeks and is unlikely to play in this upcoming matchup. So when you take a look at that, I think there's a lot of reasons to say sit Tannehill. Of course, the opposite goes for Derrick Henry, who's already a must-start, but this should mean extra volume for him in an especially good game. The Jets have been crushed against running backs. They've given up four rushing TDs in the last two games, third most fantasy points to backs. And let's be honest, Derrick Henry didn't need it. He already had 300 rushing yards and 80 receiving yards in just the previous two games. That's insane. First of all, you already mentioned in our last week's Start Sit video. What happened to this guy? He's like Christian McCaffrey all of a sudden. 80 receiving yeah, yards in two games. Crazy. It's not like he's only been in the league too, like one or two games or seasons, I should say. Yeah. He's been in, you know, I mean, this is like his fifth year. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what's going on, but he looks 
like he's pretty solid out there. It's scary. Uh, mm-hmm. In fact, it's almost unfair to defensive backs. I saw him just line up a linebacker and just put him on his back. It's just not. It's not good. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> Moving on to the other wide receiver there, Julio Jones, right? Uh, with A.J. Brown almost definitely going to be out in this game, and, and maybe he plays, but if he is down, Julio Jones is a must-start, right? This isn't maybe the perfect matchup, but he's going to see increased volume this game with the absence of A.J. Brown, so definitely start him. He has much lower value if Brown does play, but let's be honest, if Brown does play, he'll probably be a little bit banged up. So I'm expecting this is going to be a good week for Julio Jones. Moving on to the wide receivers, Anthony Ferkshire. He's been hurt for a little bit, and so uh, Jeff Schwaim has been kind of playing the role of the tight end there. Uh, not done a whole lot with it for me. He's a sit. I'm also going to sit their kicker, Randy Bullock. And as we get into the uh, as we get into the Titans defense, they've been a bad fantasy defense this year. Most weeks I wouldn't say to play them, but I think this is the week to play them. They go up against the Jets, who give up the most fantasy points to opposing defenses. They're averaging six and a half points a game. They're giving up five sacks a game, and they're averaging just under three turnovers a game. They are horrible. So for me, I think it's a must start. Again, defenses against the Jets are averaging 16 fantasy points a game. That's really all you need to know. Capitalize on the matchup. I'd be plugging in Tennessee this week. Flipping sides, let's talk about the Jets. You got to sit Zach Wilson. In the last two games, he has six turnovers and just five fantasy points. He's got more turnovers and fantasy points. That's probably a sign you shouldn't play him. But uh, And then really, that, that's kind of just a product of the entire offense. When you look at it, I wouldn't be playing any of the running backs. Uh, you look at it, Carter has begun to get a few more touches than the other running backs in that backfield. But he saw just 11 touches, and he didn't do anything with it. And they're not really a team you can trust to find the end zone a whole lot. So for me, I'm going to sit all of their running backs. Looking at their wide receivers, there's a little more value there because of garbage time stats. But even then, there's not a lot. You can play Corey Davis. As of right now, he is 34th in wide receiver scoring. But still, I'd consider him a low-end wide receiver three or more like it in average wide receiver four. I think in most of my leagues, I will be sitting him and benching him this week. The interesting thing about that is in week one, he caught two touchdowns. The last two weeks, he has been even worse. So again, for me, I'm probably going to avoid playing him. Braxton Burrios is another guy who he he had some volume there for the first two games, but ultimately he's still just 52nd in wide receiver scoring, making him probably a wide receiver five at this point. Again, maybe those are talented wide receivers, but the offense just isn't good enough if they are good. And we really haven't seen a ton from them. Looking at the tight end, Tyler Croft, he's a guy you got to sit. I mean, last game, they lose 26 to nothing. First of all, you didn't score anything. Second of all, in a blowout like that, you'd think there'd at least be volume. He has just two catches for 12 yards, so that sit them as well. And you just continuing with this anti-Jets trend. I'm going to sit their kicker, and I'm going to sit the Jets defense. You know, I hate to be super negative about a team, but as of right now, you're only averaging six and a half points a game. That's less than a touchdown and a field goal. That basically says you're not finding the end zone in the majority of games. So for me, um, just avoiding that all around could be a a good matchup for the Titans. Yeah, you know, we're talking about the Jets, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple years ago, they looked brutal to start the season, and we made a lot of predictions about how bad they're going to be. They did turn around and have a decent season later on. They started to look like they appeared to be rebuilding. Same thing happened a couple years ago with Miami. They were just brutal the first few weeks. We thought these guys are bad, and they really did turn it around. So I want to be careful I don't have that knee-jerk reaction because I look at the Jets this year. Yeah. They look bad. They look like a team that could go all entire year without winning a game. I don't know how you feel, but they just they're, it's an ugly situation. Well, I actually just saw a recent stat. Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson have become the first quarterbacks since Deshaun Kaiser to start their first three games with seven interceptions. Mm-hmm. And you know what Deshaun Kaiser did that year? He went 0-16. Yeah. They did not win a game. So that is very likely possibility. But yeah, maybe they turn things around. They've got some talent there. It's just... Not the season, I guess. But let's move on to our next matchup. So yeah, the Chiefs at the Eagles. Uh, lo and behold, I guess Pat Mahomes is human. Um, yeah. I thought this guy was uh, unstoppable. Um, having a little bit of an off year, not looking like Pat Mahomes typically looks like. Yet, you know what? Still after three touchdown passes per game, plus a rushing touchdown. He's struggling to a horrible pace. If he continues struggling like this, he's only going to have 48 touchdown passes at the end of the year. So this is why you should never succeed in life because it just raises the bar. Yes, there you go. So it's funny. And he's going versus Philadelphia, who Dak Prescott just exposed last night. You know, Pat Mahomes is a must-start weekly. It's a no-brainer. Just start the guy. Uh, Jalen Hurts, yeah, he's going to have growing pains. He's a young quarterback, um, but he's averaging 25 fantasy points per game. And this will be a higher-scoring affair. If you take mm-hmm. a look at this game, it's going to be Pat Mahomes will put points on the board. He'll have to play catch-up. Um, 
keeping up with that strong Chiefs offense. I would start Hurts understanding he's going to make mistakes at times. He's going to throw picks. He'll be playing from behind. You have garbage time stats. doesn't really matter. Last night, he did me well. Yeah, a lot of people say it was the end of the game. I was out of control. Yeah, I agree, but I don't really care. Stats or stats start this guy. Uh, Edwards Hilaire. Uh, finally, after uh, the first year, he had his first fumble last week in the NFL. He only fumbled once in college. Falls mm-hmm. it back the next game and fumbles again. Mm-hmm. I just traded for this guy, and I was like, oh, here we go. Like, terrible thing. Um you know, Andy Reid stuck with the guy, and he looked really good. He ran well. He found holes. He finished 17 carries for 100 yards. Looked very explosive. Mm-hmm. And and I, I, what I would like to see with him, though, is his role expanding in the passing game. Yeah. Um, that's where he's strong, is out, out in space like that. But I think those targets are going to come. He found the end zone last week with a nice catch. So he's a strong RB2 start this week. Miles Sanders. Um, do you know what would help the development of Hurts at quarterback? Probably if they use their running back more. Yeah, play action, running the ball. His usage is really perplexing for me. They're not using Miles Sanders a lot. Got uh, 5.2 yards per carry this season, 5.3 last, in a career 4.9 carry, you know, yards per carry for his career. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet he's only averaging 10 carries per game. Now, someone said, well, they fell behind last game. That's why he didn't get it. But they had only three carries um, between all the running backs the entire game, and they were never committed to the run. So I'm a little bit confused why you're not protecting your young quarterback that way. Anything you want to comment on that? No, yeah, absolutely. It's so funny. We've seen young quarterbacks succeed from day one. You look at guys like Andrew Luck, and certainly it was Andrew Luck, but he was successful his rookie year. I think they were a playoff team. Um, It's just so funny. There's principles we see, like learn how to run the ball, then you can run the play action, then you can pass well. Like It just opens up the whole field, and teams, they just get away from it. The Seahawks did it last year, and it just, I don't know what it is. Like I know it's not as fun and exciting, but run the football. Yeah. So you look at Miles Sanders, I think he's a very talented back there. He does have eight catches through three games. He's talented. He's their best back by far. He's a must start. But he's a low-end running back, too, um, flex and small leagues. Uh, he carries better value in PPR leagues. Now, here's the good news for Miles Sanders. He plays Kansas City up the fifth most points to backs. So I'd go ahead and start him. I know that he's been a little disappointed, but the guy's got a lot of talent, and he's really hard to leave on your bench at this point. Tyreek Hill. Uh, you got to start this guy. Now, Philadelphia's been strong against opposing teams, number one wide receiver, but Hill's a must-start weekly stud every week, regardless, doesn't matter. Uh, the week that you decide to sit him and you try to get cute with your matchup is the week that goes off for you know three touchdowns, 180 yards, so just go ahead and play him. As far as the other wide receivers for Kansas City, it's Russian Roulette. Don't even bother. I mentioned to see what Josh Gordon does there. I don't think he's going to have a huge value, but I'm just curious to see kind of what he'll do in that lineup. But once again, I would sit the rest of the Kansas City wide receivers. Anybody that you like there that pops out or draws your attention? No, nobody in that game that pops out besides the obvious, like, a, you know, Kelsey, that, that's going to be fun to watch, going to be a good game for him, but that's not interesting to talk about, I guess. For me, I'm just continually curious to see what they're doing with Jalen Hurts. He just befuddles me. I can't tell if he's going to be the next great NFL quarterback or a total bust. I, I don't know. It's just yeah, he's confusing. Between, yeah, so. uh, let's look at the wide receivers right now for the Philadelphia Eagles. you got Walken, Smith, Rager. Uh, like we said last week, he said you can't rely on any of these guys. And sure enough, they came out and proved that to us. Um, they'll have higher volume in this game in terms of targets, but I think Hertz will struggle at times. They are younger wide receivers in Sanders, Goddard, Dallas Goddard, and then Ertz. Uh, they'll still target. So I would sit those young wide receivers. They have big days ahead of them. I think mm-hmm. that Smith and Rager look like they could be legitimate wide receiver ones, but they're not there just yet. So I would sit those guys. As far as tight ends go, Dallas Goddard, Ertz. Um, one of those guys needs to go. One of the guys needs to get hurt, lead the team, get traded. Something's going to happen there. But until one begins to distance himself, I would sit both tight ends, find better options if you can do that there. If you had to lean on a guy, I guess Dallas Goddard would be your guy, but he's not very exciting for me. I actually just traded for a tight end because I just, um, besides the top three or four guys out there, it's hard to depend on any of those guys. Mm -hmm. Speaking of tight ends you can depend on, there is a tight end in this game that you can depend on, and he is... Kelsey. Travis Kelsey, who, by the way, is, you know, if he continues playing the way that he is, he might break his own records this year. The guy's having a phenomenal season. Um... And then look at what Schultz, the tight end for Dallas, just did against Philadelphia. Now just imagine what Kelsey could do against them. Yeah. As far as kickers go, I would sit Elliott, start Buckner, uh, sit Philadelphia's defense, but start Kansas City's defense. Hurts is making mistakes. But, you know, this one's tough for me because, I, you know, he is making some mistakes. There could be some play there. Um, but yet also look and consider Kansas City's defense has only had four sacks on the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're looking below average. And so I think they're a defense that you can start. Um, but just because Hertz is making mistakes, I would start them as a low, um, kind of a low defensive play. Yeah. So that's kind of where I land with all those guys. All right. Awesome. Nothing else to add there at the end? Nope. All right. Now we're breaking down the Panthers at the Cowboys. Let's start off with the Cowboys, man, and Dak Prescott. I think you need to start Dak Prescott this week. And here's the thing. He goes against the Panthers, who have given up the fourth fewest fantasy points to opposing QBs. But as I've always said, the stats don't lie. 
but you need the whole truth. Sometimes they only tell part of the truth, right? So fourth fewest, but they went up against Zach Wilson, Jameis Winston, and Davis Mills. The fact of the matter is if you didn't shut them down, you've got major problems. So I think that's a bit of a deceiving number. Of course, you look at Prescott. He's got three touchdown passes in two of his three games this year. Now, he had zero touchdown passes in week two versus the Chargers, but we have seen the Chargers, especially their pass defense, is shockingly good this year. They've been really fun to watch. They are a great, I would say probably even elite pass coverage team. So he's a must start. Going to the running backs now with Ezekiel Elliott. Um, right as people are starting to doubt him, he's just fine last week. I think he's a guy you got to play. Now, the Panthers have given up the fewest fantasy points to opposing running backs. In fact, they've allowed zero rushing touchdowns to running backs, and they're averaging just 45 rushing yards against them. That's going to be a tough game. However, you know, one thing that we know about Zeke is that he can catch the ball when he needs to. I mean, he is not maybe quite an Alvin Kamara, but this is, you know, a 50 catch running back who can do work and, and manage that in the games where it is needed. As far as Tony Pollard, I think he's a guy we have to talk about. I wouldn't play him. He is currently 20th in RB scoring, but when we look at that, it's really held up by a top five finish in week two. The other weeks, he finished 39th among running backs. That week was probably a little bit of a fluke, maybe. I mean, he's certainly a very talented running back, but we saw in this last game, the Cowboys are sticking to Zeke, especially in the end zone. So moving on to the wide receivers, you got to start both C.D. Lamb and Amari Cooper. There's not a whole lot to discuss there, but here's the interesting thing. And again, we talk about deceiving stats. The Panthers have given up the seventh fewest fantasy points to receivers, but they gave up two touchdowns to Corey Davis, who has to catch passes from Zach Wilson. And then Davis Mills threw nine catches and 112 yards to Brandon Cooks. So again, it's the matchup thing where they've had really easy matchups to go against. I think they're going to have a great day. The guy that's really surprising that you should be starting is Dalton Schultz. The Panthers are, excuse me, struggling there for a second. He is fifth in tight end scoring right now. Last game, he had six catches for 80 yards and two TEDs. This isn't maybe the easiest possible matchup. Definitely not as easy as last week, but tight end position is so thin and he's looked surprisingly good. Yeah, but not surprising to us. And I'll tell you why it's not surprising to us. If you go back a few weeks ago at the beginning of the season, we said a lot of people are leaning towards Jarwin there as the tight end to go to. But we said we prefer Schultz. We think he's the guy. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, week by week, his role is expanding. He's looking really good. I think he's got to put your money on I mean, he's not going to become Jason Witten, but uh, he's still a very good play at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Moving on to the kicker, Greg Zerline. I think you got to sit him. He didn't attempt any field goals last game, and one of the extra points he attempted, he missed. So I just, you feel like he, he's certainly a good kicker throughout his career. He's been phenomenal in the past, but I just don't feel comfortable putting him in my lineup in this week. And as we mentioned in the waiver wire video, there always seems to be a couple of good kickers out there you can plug and play. Finally, go to the defense, the Cowboys. Um, I think they're a medium to low end start. They do have eight turnovers in three games, but they are certainly not a great defense. Um, that wraps up the Cowboys side. Let's get on to the Panthers and Sam Darnold. I think he's a guy you should start. He's currently 12th in quarterback scoring. Now, he's done it against very mediocre defenses, but that's, in my mind, very much what the Cowboys defense is very mediocre, and they're an offense that's going to put up points. In fact, this is an offense that is definitely going to put up more points than the Panthers have allowed all year long. That's going to force Sam Darnold to throw the ball more. I think this is going to be a game of big volume for him. Of course, you got to look at the running back situation. Now, right now, McCaffrey has not been placed on the IR, but he is almost definitely going to be out for the next couple of weeks. They're kind of holding out hope. Um, and basically the breakdown, what you need to know is if a running back or a player goes in the IR, they need to be out for three weeks or more. I think they're hoping he'll be back in three weeks. I don't necessarily think it's going to happen, but uh, they went with that. Of course, the player to start there is Chubba Hubbard. If you are a Christian McCaffrey owner and he won't be in your lineup this week, you got to put that guy in. He actually looked pretty good. He was no Christian McCaffrey, but I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be too upset with him in my lineup this week. Uh, moving on to the wide receivers, you got to start DJ Moore. He has been phenomenal, currently the ninth wide receiver in fantasy scoring. And again, Dallas, they have given up three 100-yard games to receivers. They've given up four touchdowns in three games. They're six most fantasy points allowed to wideouts. So he's a definite play. The other guy to consider is Robbie Anderson. And I'll put it out there, he makes me nervous, but this also feels like the game that he could kind of bounce back because he's, he's been a disappointment this year. Through three games, he has five catches for 103 yards and a touchdown. 
That is not very good. That's only a catch or two a game for about 30 yards is not looking great. And it doesn't feel like a fluke to me. Terrace Marshall and Brandon Zilstra have really carved out roles in that offense to kind of have that, you know, kind of step in. And, and they've been some reliable guys. That being said, if there were ever a game to play, uh, to play Robbie Anderson, it would probably be this game. Again, I think they're going to get tested and their offense is going to need to score more points. But for me, I'd put him at a wide receiver four and I wouldn't play him unless you are kind of looking to plug in a guy based off of injuries or matchups or whatever it may be. I'm going to bench all of their tight ends and I'm going to sit Zane Gonzalez. Finally, I'm going to sit the Panthers defense. They've been fairly good for fantasy, but the Cowboys is the best offense that they have faced so far this year. Um, so that's my breakdown of this game. I think it's going to be fun to watch. But uh, Rob, do you have anything to add? Nope. So I got the Giants versus the Saints. Start with quarterback Daniel Jones. Saints defense is playing very good right now. They're only allowing 14 points per game. Remember what they did to Aaron Rodgers in week one? They dismantled them and made them look terrible. Uh, which, by the way, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers since week one look just fine. So that yeah. tells you a little something about how well that defense played. That defense is averaging two picks or interceptions per game. I would sit Daniel Jones this one just sit him. Uh, don't even consider it. As far as Winston goes, um, when he hits Michael Thomas back, that's going to help. But in the meantime, they're really playing it close to the vest with him. If there was such a thing as standard scoring for quarterbacks in the sense that you know yards didn't count, it was just simply touchdowns, then maybe he'd be fine. He's got seven touchdown passes in three games. But consider this. Three total games, he's only got a total of 38 completions. That's 13 completions per game. He's having only 129 passing yards per game. They're keeping a very tight leash on him. Uh, mm-hmm. They're not allowed to make a lot of mistakes. You can tell what they're doing there. They want to run the ball and play defense, so I would sit him. Well, you said he's got, what, seven touchdowns in three games? Yeah. But he's really got just two touchdowns in the last two games. Yeah. Yeah, to consider that. So, uh, Alvin Kamara. Giants give him the 10th most points to running backs. He's by far their best, most reliable weapon. Um, he's going to have a big week. I would start him as a top five running back. Alvin Kamara should have a huge week there. Saquon Barkley. Okay, Saints are only allowing 60 rushing yards per game. That is not good. And he's not back in a pre-ACL shape that he was before. He's not back to the Saquon Barkley that we saw a couple years ago. But the encouraging sign last game is he had six catches. This is a guy that's got great hands. He's very effective in the passing game. He had 143 catches the first two years in the league there. That makes him startable this week regardless of matchup. Um, because one, he's still Saquon Barkley. He's got the potential to have a big week. But he's not a running back one. He's not there yet. He's not got back to that place. He's a, a RB2 in this one. So temper your expectations, but you can play him. As far as wide receivers go, think about Shepard. Um, you know, he'd been reliable the first two weeks, but here's hamstring. Um, and then you look at the Saints team when they faced Devontae Adams week one that kept him in check. Uh, so this is a week that um, if you have better options, it's better to sit him there. Now, as far as the other guys, the other wide receivers on the team, they got Slayton and, and Kenny Galladay. So Slayton hurt his hamstring. Looks like he's probably not going to play this week. Um, but even if he does play, I would still sit. Uh, what I would say, though, is that uh, maybe he sits and maybe uh, Sterling Shepard sits because Shepard's got a hamstring injury. So if those two guys happen to sit in this one, that might be exactly what Kenny Galladay needs to kind of jumpstart his year there. Uh, maybe he'll get some extra targets. Maybe he'll come around. Maybe you consider starting him as a low-end wide receiver three or flex play. But here's the concern I have with Kenny Galladay. You can talk about play calling. You can talk about a lot of things there, but he's not getting the separation. He's not looking like a great pick. I think they overpaid for this guy in the offseason. So... Um, you could play him if the two other wide receivers sit, but it'd probably be better to to sit him if you could. Um, as far as wide receiver for the Saints go, what do you think I'm going to say about the wide receiver for the Saints? Sit. Sit every single one out there. And it's unfortunate because right now the, the Giants give the fifth most points to wide receivers, so there could be a guy that might come on and have a big game, but you don't know who that's going to be at this point. I would sit them. I would sit all tight ends. I would sit Gano, Rosas, the kickers in this one. I would start the Saints defense, and I would sit the Giants defense. Pretty easy game to break down there. Not a lot of fantasy value in that one. There is some value in the Saints side of it, but uh, kind of a fantasy snoozer, really. Yeah, pretty straightforward. I wish I had to break down that game. That was nice and simple for it. It was yeah. easy, wasn't it? Up next, let's go Texans versus Bills. we got to start off with Josh Allen. After a rough week one, the Bills have been fine. They put up 78 points in their last two games. That offense is on fire, and, and the Texans give up the ninth most fantasy points to Q- QBs. So, you know, obvious start there, but... You got to play Josh Allen. Go to the running backs because this may be the more interesting one. There's definitely been some deceptive stats from Devin Singletary, who's gotten garbage time stats. They got a big, say, example versus the Miami Dolphins when they won 35 0. And so then Singletary had a couple TDs in that game. But in reality, Zach Moss has been the running back. When it counts, Moss is in. When you're looking at yards per carry, Moss is better. When you're looking at usage in the passing game, Moss has been better. In fact, Moss has three touchdowns in the last two games. I think you got to start Zach Moss and sit Devin Singletary. Going to the wide receiver, Stefan Diggs. 
definitely play him. Now, he has not been quite as amazing as people expected him to be coming into this season, but we really expected that. We talked about the idea that regression happens from players who have elite seasons. It's something you just need to expect. Uh, that being said, he hasn't been horrible. You know what I mean? He's still been a guy who's going to go out there and get you eight catches for 70-plus yards. He just hasn't really found the end zone yet. And I think something happened last week that is really going to help him in the future. And that was Cole Beasley went off for a ton of catches and yards. And then uh, Emmanuel Sanders had like, what, 94 yards and two touchdowns. Defenses are going to realize now, hey, we got to pay attention to those guys that should create a little more room for Stefan Diggs to work with. I think this is going to be a big game for him. He is a must start. If you're looking for a deep option in PPR leagues, you can you can put Cole Beasley out there. He's a guy who's going to get you six to eight catches for 60 to 70 yards. I don't think he is a super highly dependable player in standard, and he definitely doesn't have a huge ceiling, but he is a volume guy who's got good hands, and he's fairly dependable, so you can play him, but I would consider him a wide receiver three or flex play. I would sit Emmanuel Sanders. I get it. Last week was exciting. Five catches, 94 yards in two TDs. But before that, the first two weeks, he finished outside of the top 60 in wide receiver scoring. It's just, I think last week was a bit of a fluke. Certainly, he's a good wide receiver. But he's what I would say probably is the wide receiver three on that depth chart. I, I think Cole Beasley comes ahead of him. So for me, I'm going to avoid him. You can play Dawson Knox back-to-back weeks with a touchdown. He had four catches for 49 yards last week. I don't love him. I would consider him a kind of 10 to 14 range tight end. You can play him, but if you have other options, you know, maybe look towards some of those other guys like we just talked about Dalton Schultz or somebody else. As far as their kicker goes, I'm going to start Tyler Bass and the defense there. I'm going to start them. They got six turnovers in two games, and this should be a good game for the Bills defense against the Texans. Speaking of the Texans, let's get into their offense. I'm going to sit Davis Mills versus the Bills, who have got the fifth fewest fantasy points allowed to QBs. you got to sit the backfield. The entire Ingram, Johnson, and Lindsey, look at it last week. Phillip Lindsey led that that running back group for carries. He had seven carries for five yards. Um, Just avoid all of those guys at this point. It's a running back by committee in the worst worst possible way. As far as the wide receivers go, there's really only one guy I would consider playing. That's Brandon Cooks. He is currently sixth amongst wide receivers in fantasy. He's averaging like eight catches for 100 yards. You know, not the perfect, you know, quarterback, you know, wide receiver duo there, but he's a good wide receiver. And he's got this thing going for him that means a lot, and that is garbage time stats, right? There's a reason that Blake Bortles threw 30 touchdowns one year and Alan Hearns went over 1,000 yards. Why? Because garbage time stats count. I would play Brandon Cooks. You guys, did you want some to add there? No. No, okay. So we continue on really straightforward. I'm going to sit their tight end, Jordan Akins. I'm going to sit their kicker, Joey Sly. And I'm going to sit the Texans defense this week. As of right now, there's just not a lot of fantasy value there. At the Lions versus the Bears, talk about quarterback again, Jared Goff. The Bears got the ninth fewest points of quarterbacks. He doesn't really have a legitimate wide receiver target there, at least not a guy that can dominate, versus Chicago, which is a very good defense. Now, last week versus the Ravens, they shut them down. Uh, the formula that they use is the same formula that the Bears are going to try to use to emulate that, so I would sit Jared Goff in this one. Let's look at the quarterback situation for the Bears uh, once again. Oh, man, it is ugly. It, it's hard to tell how good this Bear team could be because they just can't get a legitimate quarterback there. Uh, is it Fields? Is it Dalton? Is it possibly going to be Nick Foles? Like we said with Fields going into the last week, we said, you need to show me week. Don't play him. Now you know why we said that. Mm-hmm. Man, you need to sit that guy. Sit, sit, sit. Don't even think about it. He looked brutal last week. Um, even if he goes out and has a good game, let's say he ends up playing it, and I think that the team's going to end up sitting him because yeah. he's just not ready. He's not ready to be there. And the Bears are a legitimate playoff contender at this point. But let's say he goes out and has a good week. You know what? He played so bad week one that I need a few games together. He needs to string a few games together before I'd even consider starting him, just sit him. Yeah. Um, I think the coach was hesitant to start him for a reason. We see why he was hesitant, why Andy Dalton was his guy, who's now considered week to week. So I think the guy will either be Andy Dalton, if he's okay to go, or Nick Foles um, will have an opportunity to play in that game. Um, with that said, uh, that Bears offense has been dismal the last couple of years. I would sit all quarterbacks. It doesn't matter who's playing in that one, even though they have a nice matchup, which is unfortunate because Detroit gives up the seventh most points to quarterbacks, but I would still sit all those. It doesn't matter for me. I mean, would you even consider Dalton or Foles if they started in their place? No, definitely not. Uh, Start Montgomery. I think he's a solid running back one in the 10 to 12 range amongst running backs. I think you have a good week there. I think you need to play him. 
As far as the running backs go for Detroit, you got Swift, you got Jamal Williams. So I think there'll be a lot of action this game is to try to run the ball quite often to really tame that Bears pass rush. Now, Swift is at 19 catches through three games and two touchdowns. That makes him a strong start in PPR leagues as a running back, too. In standards, he's a little bit lower. I'd say he's a low-end running back, too, in that one. And Jamal Williams, this is a guy that's, I think, very underrated. We said going into the year, this is a guy that was a great weapon in Green Bay. Um, he's very capable of being the team's lead back if he was in that situation there. Uh, so he's going to have a strong role from week to week. But he's not as talented as the younger Swift. But he's very strong in the passing game. 13 catches and two rushing touchdowns at 4.3 yards per carry. So when I look at Williams, um, I'm not going to play him in standard leagues, but you could play him as a flex and RB2 in PPR leagues that are over 12 teams. I don't know if that's making any sense there. Uh, let's look at the uh, wide receivers. Let's look at the Chicago wide receivers. Uh, the lines have been torched by wide receivers. That line secondary can be exposed. That brings some value back to Allen Robinson, who you have this year, and you have to be disappointed by the game. Yeah, it's right? been a frustrating season for sure. Yeah, it really has. And you had a lot of talent, and uh, I hate to put you out there, but I can't help it. I'm not going to stop now. I've got to say it. Um, you, we kept five guys, and you went back and forth, and you weren't sure about Allen Robinson, some running backs. And who was the one wide receiver that you didn't keep going into this year? We're not talking about the fact that was I let Cooper Cup Was go. it Cooper Cup? Yeah, I think so. So that's got to hurt a little bit. Sorry. It's, and you know what? I'm paying the price for it because my team sucks compared to last year. I think you're in a rebuild. I am in a rebuild, unfortunately. Yeah, it happens. So. But, you know, here's the thing about Allen Robinson. The guy's very good. Allen Robinson is, is a legitimate, solid, tier one wide receiver who, once again, is being plagued by bad quarterbacks. I feel terrible yeah. for this guy. Um, he's looked bad so far. It's not his fault. Better days are ahead for him. And he's far too talented to sit. So I think in this game, which is actually a very good matchup for him against Detroit that can be exposed by wide receivers, he's a low-end wide receiver, too. Around the 22 to 26 range for wide receivers go there. Um, I would play him, even though I know he has been pretty. I would sit Mooney in this one until the quarterback play improves. As far as wide receivers for the Lions, I would sit all Lions wide receivers. Now, the Bears actually, if they have a defensive weakness, it's in the passing game. But none of these wide receivers stand out. And they'll end up feeding their tight ends and their running backs to probably take pressure off that pass rush and the occasional target going to the wide receiver. If there was a wide receiver you had to trust, it would be Cephas. But he's still not reliable enough to be your week-to-week -week play. I would sit all wide receivers there. As far as tight ends go, a Hawkinson. He was shut down by the Ravens, but he's a stud tight end. He's a top five guy. You need to play him. He's a first round, eighth overall pick for a reason. Uh, he's their best receiver on mm -hmm. that team. So you go ahead and start him. I would sit the Bears tight ends. I would sit both kickers. I would start the Bears defense that's had 10 sacks in two games. Um, they're at home. That's a great matchup. And here's the thing with the Lions defense. I would sit them if Dalton or Foles gets a start. But if for some reason they get Fields a start, I would roll with the Lions and give it a shot one more game. Yeah. All right, guys, next up we have Washington at the Atlanta Falcons. Let's start off with Taylor Heineke. He's, you know, he's been surprisingly good so far this year. You go to game one, 300-plus yards and two TDs. In game two, hit three touchdowns versus a Bills team that's really been shutting down. I think they're the fifth-fewest fantasy points to opposing QBs. I think he's a guy you got to start. Furthermore, it's not just how he's played in the past. He goes up against Atlanta, who's given up the most fantasy points to opposing QBs. They gave up eight touchdowns in the first two games. He is a definite guy to play this week. Uh, going to the running back situation, Antonio Gibson. Now, right now, he's 18th in fantasy running back scoring. And I want to point that out because I know a lot of people have been very disappointed with him. But he's still been an RB, too, right? I mean, that's it. He's not been a guy who's been phenomenal. But look back at last week. I think the big concern is he hasn't been running well. 12 carries for 31 yards. That really comes down to, I don't think that's him. I think that's the offensive line. I think that's play calling and a lot of stuff. But you know what? He was fine. He saved himself with that phenomenal 75-yard touchdown. It was awesome. It was a great play to watch. And the Falcons give up the 13th most fantasy points to opposing running backs. So again, you might be a little nervous, might be a little disappointed. Play Antonio Gibson. He's going to be all right. He's going to be fine. As far as the other running back goes, J.D. McKissick, you got to sit him. He had one exciting game, but then boom, kind of got relegated and put back to his role last week where he just wasn't very effective. We see it happen. It happens all the time. Players pop up, they have a great game, and they're maybe even a good player, but they're not the starter, and they kind of go back to their role. Um, so for me, I'm going to sit him as well. Of course, you go to the wide receivers. Rob, you know exactly what I'm about to say. You got to start Terry McLaurin, and that's it. I, go, I love that dude. 
He is, uh, I got to get me a, a McLaurin, a Scary Terry jersey. I love that guy. You know, uh, he's another guy that I think is 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 really could be a top ten, top five, even potential wise, talent wise. Mm-hmm. If he could just get better quarterback play, but I love him. He's going to bounce back this week with a big week. Tell me what 150 yards, uh, eight catches, maybe a touchdown. I'd like to see that. And you know what? Maybe a touchdown, maybe two. They have been giving up so many touchdowns. The Falcons have to opposing wide receivers. They've allowed five touchdowns to wide out so far this year, and I think that trend could continue this week. Of course, you got to play Logan Thomas. Not only has he been pretty darn good, he is what he's played top 13 all three weeks amongst tight ends. He has been basically a starter this entire time. Hasn't been the most exciting, the most amazing, but the tight end position is thin, and the Falcons, in true Falcons fashion, give up the eighth most fantasy points to tight ends uh, because apparently they couldn't stop a leaf blowing in the wind. Uh, looking at their, their moving on there, excuse me, looking at their kicker, I think you got to start Dustin Hopkins. He's been fairly good. Uh, last week was bad for him, but it was a bad matchup versus the Bills. What do you expect? They struggled to move the ball. Finally, the Bill, or excuse me, uh, looking at their defense, they've been a bad fantasy defense so far this year. I'm going to sit their defense. Yeah, it's um, going to be a big disappointment. You know, look at coming in the show, there's a lot of huge talk about how they could be a dominant defense. It hasn't happened yet. They do have a lot of young players that might turn it around, but uh, very disappointed. I was big on them. Yeah, for sure. Flipping sides, kind of other side of the football, Matt Ryan, I think you might want to consider giving him a start this week. Now, I'm not huge on him, but if you are in a two-quarterback league or a 14-team league or something like that, he can be played. Washington gives up the most fantasy points to opposing QBs. The most. In week one, they gave up 18 points. In week two, they gave up 30. And in week three, they gave up 42. They have been lit up by quarterbacks. Furthermore, Matt Ryan stunk the first game, but he's actually been a fair bit better in the previous, or excuse me, the last two games where he had two touchdowns apiece. This might be a week for him. He might pick it up to three or maybe four touchdowns. He really could. As far as the running back goes, Mike Davis, um, not a great matchup. So really, I think the thing when we look at Washington is they've been really bad versus the pass, but their front seven's been pretty good. They're giving up the seventh fewest fantasy points to running backs. And again, continue with Mike Davis. He's been 24th in fantasy RB scoring. So again, he hasn't been as disappointing as many people make him out to be, but this does not feel like the matchup for me. I'm going to avoid playing him. Now, I get it. You might need to plug him into your flex, or if you're desperate at running back, play him at your RB2. But I consider him an RB3 play this week. If that's a, I don't know if you agree with that or not. Um, of course, we got to talk about Cordero Patterson. Oh, my goodness. This is just one of those guys who, you know, NFL journeyman, kind of been all over the place, hadn't really been impressive other than his kicker turning ability, you know, at all. And suddenly he's looking pretty darn great right now. What do you make of that? You know, I, it's hard to say. I think I think he still is a journeyman there. Um, this guy's yards per carry haven't been good. He's not great as a running back, but he's got a lot of targets that keeps him valuable because you can start him at yeah. that position. I would not be surprised. We're coming from the trade deadline if he gets traded to a team that's a contender that looks for an extra weapon, a guy that can come out or also return kicks and do that. Yeah. Um, I think right now, if you're desperate, you can rely on him. But I do think that. Uh, this is not a guy that I would trust long term. But once yeah. again, uh, you got to be able to ebb and flow. You got to be flexible in the league. And right now, you have to admit that he, he's got kind of a role there. And I think in a lot of games are going to be playing from behind. So yeah, you know they begin with touches at running back and at wide receiver. So at the very least, it means volume. And again, he should capitalize on that volume in this matchup. Washington's given up the second most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. Play Cordero Patterson. You also got to play Calvin Ridley. Again, he's a guy who's going to get you. Know, he's going to get you six to eight catches for probably 70, 65, 70 plus yards, and hopefully find an end, find the end zone in this matchup. That's really been the thing that's held him back. Is he's played fine, but that offense has struggled to to kind of find the red zone there a little bit. This will probably be the week if it's going to happen. If not, I don't know. But uh, moving on to the wide, or excuse me, to the tight ends. I want to talk about Kyle Pitts. Last week was a bit of a down week, but I still feel like he's a guy who's trending up. He's young and talented. He's very capable. I think this should be a good week for him to kind of continue stepping up like that. Certainly, he is not playing like Gronk is playing right now. He's not playing like Kelsey is playing right now. But unless you have one of those top four, maybe five tight ends, you need to start him. Finally, I'm going to sit there kicker, Young Wei Ku. Uh, he's a good kicker, but the offense is just too bad. And then I'm going to sit their defense as well. So my last game for the video is the Colts versus the Dolphins. Talk about Jacoby Brissett. 
Uh, last week, he had 22 points. Not a bad week. Um, didn't do great passing, but he had a rushing touchdown and rushing errors. That kind of saved his week. Unfortunately, back-to-back weeks, no touchdown passes. You can't rely on his legs. He's not Lamar Jackson. I would sit him. Now, some would argue that, you know, yeah, but that defense was exposed by Russell Wilson. He tore them up. Um, if I need to explain to you the difference between Russell Wilson and Brissett, I don't think you should be playing fantasy football. Just go ahead and sit this guy. I don't even well, take He also chances. doesn't have DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Exactly. So just go ahead and sit him. Um, let's get Carson Wentz. One, Wentz is not playing well. He's had some injuries, some other things going on there. Now he's playing the Dolphins. Got the ninth fewest points to quarterbacks. And they made Josh Allen look pedestrian. I would sit him at this point. Now let's look at the running back situation here. Talk about Taylor uh, running back for the Colts. He hasn't been great. A little disappointing I have him. But, man, he's got a great matchup versus Miami, allowing the second most points to backs. You add to the fact that Wentz is not playing well, I think he's going to get about 20, 25 touches in this game, take pressure off him, and to run the ball really well. Now we talked about Miami giving up the second most points to backs. Um, but, you know, of course, you assume that that's great backs. That must be against Hunter Henry, Christian McCaffrey, et cetera. Der- like Derrick that. Henry. Derrick Henry, yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm all over the map. It's been a long day for me. But you know who is making them look bad? Miami face, consider this, okay? Peyton Barber, Damian Harris, and Devin Singletary. Those are the backs that expose them. And so I think, you know, he's going to have a big week. I think this week that Taylor goes out, has 100 rushing yards, finds the end zone, starts as a low running back one. That should be a strong start for you there. Go ahead and play him. You got Naheem Hines. He's having 3.6 catches per game uh, since he's been in the league. That's 57 catches per season. This guy's a very solid option in the passing game. And I think in this game, you can start him as what I would say a flex and a running back two in PPR leagues that are 16 teams or larger. I would sit him, though, in standard leagues or smaller leagues. Let's look at Gaskins. Um, the guy has not been bad. You know, 5.1 yards per carry. He's had 16 targets in three games. Those are all good signs. The problem, he's only had nine carries per game. Some of that could be durability, size, uh, why the coaches are not relying on him more at this point, but it makes it a little concerning for me. I would sit him in standard leagues. He's only had six touchdowns in three seasons. I would start him as a running back two in PPRs because he does have good value in PPR leagues, and I think he'll, he'll bounce back there. Um, Pascal, uh, three touchdowns in three weeks. Um, but last week was not pretty, did not look good, and we warned against it. We said, one, his yards and his targets are not there. They're concerningly low. He's only after 37 yards per game. I would sit him. They're going to rely heavily on their backs this one, so I would sit him. And you got Michael Pittman. So uh, 24 targets last two games. That's great volume. He's got 14 catches. Uh, that's awesome. And he's a big six foot four wide receiver. He's got good upside. Now, Miami's secondary is solid. And Wentz is not playing great. So that kind of brings his volume down a little bit. I think his value is about a wide receiver three or a flex start in deep leagues. So look at the wide receivers for Miami there. you got Waddle. Um, I drafted him in a dynasty league. I like this guy. He's got 22 catches on 26 targets in three games. Very strong catch percentage at 88%. And the quarterback rating when thrown to is 101, which is good. Doesn't sound spectacular, but when you consider the quarterbacks that have been throwing him the ball, that's really good. He's a former first-round pick. This guy's a stud. So I would start as a low-end running back, or a low-end wide receiver too. And that would mean he would be in leagues, I would say, probably 14 teams or larger. Um, now we're talking about Fuller, Will Fuller, and, and Devontae Parker there. What do you do with those guys? Uh, Fuller came back. Um, I would say both guys in this game. Here's why. Um, Indianapolis does give up the eighth most points to quarterbacks, but I think they're going to play it conservatively. I think that approach um, there with Brissetta quarterback. The other thing that I concern myself with, I think at Parker and Fuller, they devalue one another because they take away targets from each other. And this one, as far as tight ends go, I would sit Doyle and Cox and start Mike Gusecki, but here's the thing. He's inconsistent. And so he's a guy that one week will go out and the guy will just be great. Last week he had, I don't know how many catches, double-digit catches look wonderful. He was wonderful. 10, 11. Yeah. Uh, but then he'll disappear. So you, obviously you could start him, but I would lower his value to a very low-end tight end one. I would start Blankenship as a kicker. I'd sit Sanders. I would start Miami's defense. Um, and I would start Indy's defense. I would start both defenses in this one. I think our decent play is not great, but definitely solid plays in that game. Anything you want to add to that? Yeah, you know, it's not going to be the most amazing matchup. We got two teams that just aren't looking all that fantastic, but there's some value to be found there. And and I, I, I just really appreciate your breakdown there. Guys like Jalen Waddle really surprised me what he did with a backup quarterback as a rookie wide receiver, seeing number one attention from the top cornerback. He uh like that's a player in dynasty or keeper leagues you really want to own at this point. In fact, of all the rookie wideouts, for me, he looks the most impressive. Even more impressive than Chase, huh? Yeah, I think he's more impressive than Jamar Chase at this point, which Again, that comes down to when I'm projecting things, I want to look at targets, not touchdowns, but I get it. So I guess that's the time for another video. Let's get yeah, on. I, I want to hear you take Who do you guys prefer? I'll tell you where, I, where I'm at. I'm at. I got Waddle in the Dynasty League, so I hope he's better. I love that guy. I do give a slight edge to Chase 
only because I have more confidence in his quarterback situation. That's simply it. I think that Miami, I don't think Tua is going to be the answer even when he comes back. Um, so I think that's what it comes down for me. But Maybe. I think Tua looked a little better this year, and I wonder what he'll progress to like next year and everything like that. It's hard to compare because he's got Brissett. I mean, Brissett's obviously worse, so for this season you obviously have to value Chase more. But, again, talking dynasty, what this is going to look like two or three years from now, who knows? Yeah, you know, let's hear your comments, everybody. All right, let's get into our final matchup of the video. All right, for our last game, we got to break down the Cleveland Browns at the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, this is going to be a fun game to watch. Not, Man, I tell you what, I'm a Vikings fan. I grew up in Minnesota. I, I, I love the Vikings. I hate the Vikings. I don't know what to think. Last week was, was a nice win. You know, they played really well against a, a good team. But then it makes you one of those first two games. They're literally two plays from being 3-0. and Um uh, I don't know. Their, their team is just, they're up, they're down, they get my hopes up. I don't know what to think. But you know what? Let's get past action. We're not talking about football. We're talking about fantasy football. Yeah, so we'll get into the fantasy. I do want to address that for a second. I'll be honest with you. Some people call me a pessimist. I call myself a realist. I think what's really going on there is that just revealed some weaknesses in Seattle. Probably not a testament to the Vikings. But who knows? Again, I hope I'm wrong there. It's yeah, but I think the one thing that's becoming undeniable at this point is the Vikings got a bad defense. They're not going to make the playoffs, I believe. I think I'm being realistic. But that Vikings offense, oh. they, it's not just one week. They're looking better and better. They've got some talented wide receivers. And Kirk Cousins, whatever you might think, he's never going to win you a Super Bowl. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I think he's you're going to get to it. That offense is looking good. He's looking pretty good. So, yeah, why don't we start off with the Minnesota side? Let's start off with the Vikings there. you got to start Kirk Cousins. He's got eight touchdowns, six in the last two games with how bad that defense is and how great his weapons are, he feels like a must play. I think he's going to continue rolling on. This is not a great matchup. The Browns have a better defense than, say, they faced last week in Seattle, but I think it's going to be just fine. Of course, Dalvin Cook is questionable right now, and, and I'm not going to address tons about what's going on with his injury. Based off of the matchup that we saw last week, how good Alexander Madison plays, it feels like a very safe predi uh, prediction to assume that they're going to sit Cook. Am I right? Yeah. He's We've been going on for quite a while saying that Alexander Madison was kind of widely available out there. We're like, you got to grab this guy. Cook has got a history of injuries, and Madison is very underrated. And he yeah. showed last week he can carry that offense. Yeah. So if Dalvin Cook plays, you start Dalvin Cook and sit Madison. But I think they're going to be smart. I think they're going to sit Cook, keep him healthy. Why would you play Cook when your other running back had 112 rushing yards and six catches for 59 receiving yards? He looked like a top 12 fantasy running back. He looked like just about as good as anybody in the league. So if Cook sits, Madison is a must start in this matchup. Going on to the wide receivers, I'm not going to waste tons of time. Do I need to tell you to start Justin Jefferson or Adam Thielen? If I do, um, there's pro you probably wouldn't even be watching this video, to be honest with you. Um, talk about um, KJ Osborne. He's had some good games, definitely a little bit off last week. I'm going to sit him. We, just, we don't really know if he can consistently put up the level of production that he had for a couple of games with how many weapons there are. It's just a bit of a crowded, you know, receiving corpse, especially with the emergence of Tyler Conklin, who had a really darn good game last game. Now, he's a guy who, here's what, what I'm going to say. You can start him, but you need to understand the risk. He might go out with one or two catches for 20 yards, or he might have six or seven catches for 70 yards and a touchdown. Typically, I would say avoid the risk, but the tight end position is so shallow that if you don't have like Noah Fant or TJ Hawkinson or Kelsey or like if you don't have one of those guys you love, like he might be worth the risk for you. I don't know if you agree with that, but sometimes yeah. you just got to roll the dice. Of course, moving on, I think you should start kicker Greg Joseph. Um, he's been good and with how productive that offense has been. I definitely like him. Missed some key kicks, but again, he's also been fine. He's made some good kicks, and it's yeah. about points, not production. Yeah, you got to get past that choke. Yeah, he choked a 37-yard that would have gave us a win, but mm -hmm. uh, apart from that, he, he's, he's been very effective. Finally, with the Vikings there, I would sit their defense. Flipping over, looking at the, the Browns, let's start off with Baker Mayfield. I think you got to sit him. Now, the Vikings give up the eighth most fantasy points to quarterbacks, but... They held Russell Wilson to just one touchdown last week. And when you look at it, he has just two touchdowns this year. Or uh, Baker Mayfield has thrown just two touchdowns. In fact, he is 23rd in fantasy quarterback scoring. I just don't think that you should play him. Um, part of that is, of course, the injury to his wide receivers. Jarvis Landry is on the IR, and Odell Beckham just came back. So they're going to lean heavily on the run, making Kareem Hunt a must-start. 
Vikings are allowing 120 rushing yards per game. Uh, Chubb is currently eighth in running back scoring in fantasy. He's a must play. The other guy that you probably should play, and I don't like to say it, but that's Kareem Hunt. You, For me, he's a guy you feel like you're wondering when the shoe's going to drop and they're not going to be able to continue that production. But as long as they're missing a receiver, they are going to lean heavily on the run. And they even use him in the passing game. Look back at last week, 10 carries for 81 yards, which is an astronomical eight yards per carry. But he also had six catches for 74 yards. I think you can play Kareem Hunt, but understand that he's probably not going to be an RB1. He's going to be an RB2 or a flex for you, um, especially in PPR leagues. Again, Jarvis Landry is out currently on the IR, so duh, you're not going to play him. But you got to start Odell Beckham. In his absence, he had five catches for 77 yards in his first game back. Mm-hmm. I think he is going to have a very good game, especially against the Vikings, who have given up six touchdowns to wide receivers in three games. They have been just throttled. That defensive backfield is just not so great right now. In fact, giving up the fourth most fantasy points to opposing receivers. Going on to the tight ends, I'm going to sit both Austin Hooper and David Njoku. Hooper had two, he's going to get you about two to three catches for 20 to 30 yards. Not great. Njoku had a one good game, but then he didn't even see a single target last week. So I'm going to avoid both of those guys. Um, if I'm up to you, I'm probably going to start Chase McLaughlin. Vikings have allowed a lot of kickers to make a lot of field goals against him for whatever reason. And he had two 50 plus yarders, a 40 plus yarder the other the other game, whatever that was. So he's been kicking really well. He looks super accurate. And of course, they're giving them a lot of opportunities too. I imagine that trend is going to continue. Finally, I'd sit the Browns defense. Here's an interesting fact. That Vikings offense really has been that good. They have given up the fewest fantasy points to opposing defenses. They just, they're not turning the ball over. Uh, Do you have anything to add to that? That's really my wrap up. It is a very straightforward game. There's not a lot of question marks there. But uh, guys, that's our breakdown for the video. As always, like, share, comment, subscribe, whatever. Just do all that to help support the channel because... You know what? As I've said in a few videos now, I'm just going to keep saying it. The better they do, the more motivated I am to work hard. Leave a comment question. I mean, here's the thing. We can give you a lot of information, but there's so many things you have to contextualize. Who's on your waiver wire? Who's on your bench? How size of your league? Scoring system, et cetera. If you give us questions, we can really hammer down on why you should start or shouldn't start a certain guy. So once again, we'd love to hear from you guys. All right. Well, as always, you guys have a great day and God bless.